The Medal of Honor franchise started in 1999 and it was a groundbreaking game in those years, but unfortunately the game did not make the test of time and about 10 years later it already came short in compared to its competition. Even though its success declined, it is still a franchise that we remember. In 2007, EA released Medal of Honor Airborne, which, just like its formats, led the player the ability to experience World War II. The game was released to the PC, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. But what of it in 2023? Well, of course that you can't compare it to the newest games or even to most of the games in the last 7 years, but is it still worth trying? Is there anything interesting or challenging that we might get from it today? Let's find out with this list of 10 good and bad things in the game Medal of Honor Airborne. We will start with the 5 good things. Number 1 Levels Beginning. I didn't know how to call this trait, but I guess that you'll forgive me about that. I'm talking here about the beginning of every level, well, almost every level. Every level in the game is behind the enemy's line, which explains the reason why almost all levels start with you in, in an airplane. That is actually the part that I really liked, and here is why. Although it is very repetitive, and many people today will find it very annoying, I, on the other hand, find it more accurate, and you might be right, not always accurate things in games are fun. But what I found fun about this is that it gave me a new anticipation every time, even though the game was a bit repetitive. Now, I said that you start on an airplane, yes, but I didn't mention that you are jumping off of it, which is always a fun thing to do, especially when you are under the fire of missiles. Now, not all levels begin the exact same way in the airplane, Every time there'll be something new that the characters do, and sometimes the situation is a bit dire in the air. Number 2. Challenging In compared to games today, this one is challenging in a bit of a different way. In today's game, there are all kinds of challenging tricks that the developers do, such as making the enemies more accurate or just spawning more enemies in the area, and even making it so that the player will take more damage. But with those challenges, there are also things that make everything easier, such as the option to trace enemies, aim assist, and capable teammates and then PCs. Well, not always. Now all of those that I just stated are usually adjustable with the game's difficulty. And here's what's challenging about the game in question. There is no aim assist, your teammates are not so capable, and tracing the enemies is only possible if you are looking at the bottom left corner. There is no indicator above your enemies like games today. Not that I am suggesting that every game today have it, of course. The weapons are also sort of accurate because they are not always shoot straight. And because those are Second World War weapons, there is no advanced sights to use. It's a different challenge today, but back then it was kind of usual. Anyway, I really enjoyed this part. Number 3. Ammo this is one of those games that you should be aware of your ammo capacity, and that's even on normal or easy mode, which is also another thing that is a bit different from today's military game. Now before you jump on and say, you liar, you don't know nothing, I will explain what I mean. Some of the weapons are just hard to play with, the accuracy is off, or the fire rate is very slow. So what do you usually do? You find yourself a nice weapon that you like and you're normally able to stay with it for a long time. In this game it's not very possible, there aren't many types of weapons, but it seems that those who are less comfortable are spawning more and that's lead you to change the weapons all the time, because you can't find the ammo that you need. But that is actually why I like this part, because it kept me busy by trying to hone different skills. Of course, not everyone wants this to be that way, and many people will prefer to stay with one comfortable weapon, but where is the challenge in that? I really enjoy the fact that this game gives you the opportunity to try different weapons. Number 4. Sounds Many of the sounds in this game are pretty much familiar in other games as well, such as the environment sound that you hear shots and bullets flying through the air, the sound of the weapons are unique to every weapon, which is also something pretty regular. 
I did enjoy the specific sounds of a few weapons because it let me feel like these were the actual sounds of those weapons. I don't know if it's accurate, but what's important is how it made me feel as a player. In addition, the music of every level is very captivating and elevating. I don't know who composed the music, but they knew what they were doing. From time to time, you can hear someone yelling orders which I find very weird and inaccurate. Weird because there is no one close to you, and inaccurate because the technology at the time wasn't so accessible. However, it's not a bad thing, and as usual, the sound makes the game much better. Number 5. Checkpoints. So many years have passed since I played a game from this era, that I almost forgot entirely how was it to play a game that doesn't have checkpoints. Now I'm not saying that this game doesn't have checkpoints, but they still work a bit differently. In most levels, if you die, then you're starting again at the plane, which is very similar to a lot of online games today, but not as much for single players. So I was very confused at the first time that it happened to me. What I didn't realize was that the objectives that I already finished are not coming back. I'll be a bit more specific. I needed to take a few outposts and I died after I took the first one. But because there were about 5 outposts, it took me a bit of time to realize that I don't need to take them over again after I die. So it's a different kind of checkpoint and not what we already got used to today. However, at some point there are regular checkpoints like we know them today. I found this kind of checkpoints a good thing because they add a bit more challenge to the game. I would really like to make more of these kind of videos for you guys, so if you enjoy them, please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe. The 5 bad things Number 1. Vehicles Well, what do we have here? Typically, from a game of that era, there is no driving in this game. However, your enemies do have their own vehicles, even though only the tanks are a threat. Taking those heavy vehicles down is not easy, but what's more, it's annoying. It is possible for you to stay out of ammo against them, which is annoying because this game does not respawn you to equipment and ammo as long as the player is alive. Which means that in the case where you are out of ammo, you'll have to die in order to retrieve that equipment, and that is frustrating, especially if you are trying not to die. It is not a Souls game, that was never the aim. I struggled a bit against those tanks, I won't lie, but luckily for me, there aren't too many of them throughout the game. Number 2. Enemy Variety There are almost no variety in enemies. There are about 5 different types throughout the whole game. Regular soldiers, heavy armored soldiers, snipers, missile launchers, and tanks. That's all I remember anyway. The regular soldiers had a variety of weapons, but overall, they are the same. Now before you come at me and tell me, oh, the game had that many of them! Well, they really don't. In today's game, your enemies can come as choppers, cars, different types of armored enemies, and more. So no on that one. I know that I'm talking about a 2007 game, but come on, you could have at least make different types of armored enemies. Number 3. Storytelling There is no story in the game. Eh, I'm just kidding. You can't really expect this kind of game to have a story. After all, it is based on World War II, so the main thing that they will talk about is basic operation sets and information. Every mission starts with a brief of your commanding officers. In this brief, you will see where will be the next mission, in which date, and you will also learn the information on your next objective. It's pretty straightforward, honestly. The problem is that it's portrayed in a very boring way, and you will easily be distracted by looking around to your surroundings. And later, in the mission itself, you only follow instructions and there is no much story there. They could have added at least a few ways to engage with your fellow soldiers in a way that it would seem like you're doing something with them and not alone. Number 4. Easy to get lost. Developers have always managed to find ways to hint the player where to go. They use simple tricks like putting lights or paint walls. These tricks are going way back, I want to believe in the middle 90s, 
I remember them in the first Tomb Raider game. In Medal of Honor Airborne, however, other than the map, you don't have clear indication as to where to go. Now the map is helpful, don't get me wrong, but it shows you the general direction of where you need to go and not guiding you how to get there. For example, there are a few levels where you are in a multi-platform facility and the map shows you what is the general direction of where you need to go. But it doesn't tell you if it's on an upper or lower platform. There are some points where you need to thoroughly investigate the area just to find a small ladder or a hole in the wall that you'll need to go through. And all that is without any indication that that is what you are looking for. It's a war game, goddammit, not a Sherlock Holmes game. Number 5. Shooting between the gaps. It is quite annoying when you see your enemy just in front of you and you can't hit him. Especially if he's very close to you and the only thing that separates between you two is a stairway fence. And that is exactly what happened to me multiple times during the game. Now I wouldn't complain if it made sense, but it didn't. Because the gap area was pretty wide, so I shot a lot of shots, but none of them landed. That's kind of disappointing. And that was the list. In conclusion, for a game that's currently 16 years old, it is not a bad game. I wouldn't put it on the level of its competition at that time, because let's face it, you had Bioshock and Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. The storytelling part was a big downfall for me personally. Not being able to hit your target just because of a fence was frustrating as well. However, the fighting itself was pretty fun. It was challenging both in finding your opponent and aiming to shoot. Overall, it's a challenging game to play even today, and although some parts of it are very frustrating, the vibe of the game makes this a fun experience. I would rate this game as 6.5 out of 10. And that's all for this video. If you play this game, please let me know what do you think about it in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget, enjoy your games.